Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here, looking at Command 5 of the Sadness of Heart and of Patience. Alright, so this is a uh, series dealing with the commands of uh, from the book, The Shepherd of Hermes. Um, we've already done a, a few of these and we want to try to finish out this series. So see, let's see if we can knock out one of them today. Um, this is Command 5. Verse 1 says, be patient. Right before we start, let's get a little help. The Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will... Purify us in a way, Lord, that we can deliver your message, Lord. We understand we have to attain a certain level of spirituality even to carry your message, Lord. And we always don't stay pure and stay holy. We ask that you will cleanse us through the power of your son's name so that we may be able to understand those things that you will have us to understand from your word today. In your son's name we pray, amen. Be patient, says he and long suffering all right now this is what this class is about it's about being patient and long suffering now it's kind of hard you know because it seems like they're the same thing patience is long suffering but let's see so shalt thou have dominion over all wicked works now remember how the how the blessings of the lord works we have to do the thing first then we get the blessing so if we can be patient and if we could be long suffering, then we can have the dominion over all wicked works. Right. And, and, and if the opposite is true, then we have to have patience or long suffering or, or, you know, wicked works that have dominion over us and shall fulfill all righteousness. OK. Verse two, for if thou shalt be patient, the Holy Spirit which dwelleth in thee shall be pure. OK. So now is it saying that without patience, you won't have a pure Holy Spirit, you know, something to think about. And not be darkened by any evil spirit, but being full of joy shall be enlarged, talking about this, the Holy Spirit inside of you, and feast in the body in which it dwells, and serve the Lord with joy and in great peace. So you say, well, how is this so? You know, and it, it, I'm sure it's going to give us a little more detail. But if you think about how patience works, if we can't be patient or long suffering with our neighbor, how then can the spirit, which, you know, how, you know, function properly, you know, it can't really do so. It has a hard time in there, you know, when we're dealing with, you know, impatience and, you know, um, not really giving our, our brothers a chance or whatever. Verse three. But if any anger shall overtake thee, now he's talking about the word anger. Right. So now this this section talks about a lot, a lot on the word anger. So it, and it's going to try to tie it between patience, long suffering. Okay, so there's a connection here. Let's see what it is. Presently, the Holy Spirit, which is in thee, will be straightened and seek to depart from thee. So now this is a little bit hard for me to understand because, you know, I, I've been angry a lot. And so I'm sitting here looking. I'm saying, well, I get angry because of, you know, certain things, you know, dealing with, you know, my profession or whatever. But then, you know, when I do get angry, then the Holy Spirit leaves me. Right. That's what it says right here. It is straightened and seeks to depart from you. So I'm like, that's a double whammy. You know what I'm saying? So these people can can get to me. You know, if I'm if I'm not careful, they can, you know, force me to get angry and then, you know, watch the spirit, you know, leave me or whatever. So you got to be real careful. Verse four says, for he is choked by the evil spirit. Talking about the, the righteous spirit is choked by the evil spirit and has not the liberty of serving the Lord as he would. Which means he can't do those things that it would normally do. You know, normally it want to, you know, do things good or want to, you know, charitable deeds or, you know, have a kind word for the brother. We're in the midst of anger. You can imagine it's really hard to do that. Well, this is why. This is why it says, for he is grieved by anger. You know, the good that good spirit that you 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 would you know normally expect to be there has been gone is grieved by anger when therefore both these spirits dwell together it is destructive to a man so you got you can man um inside the man you have the good versus evil and they're pulling and, and torturing so it's kind of harming him there verse 5 says as if one should take a little wormwood and put it into a vessel of honey so now we, we consider ourselves as being the vessel, but we're supposed to be a vessel of honey. But if we, you know, sprinkle anger in there or, you know, lack of patience in there, it's like adding vinegar to it or wormwood, which is a kind of, you know, bitter, bitter um, uh, thing. Let's see what it says about wormwood. No synonym. Yeah, it's supposed to be like something bitter or something or another. But he said, if you put it in there with the honey, the whole honey will be spoiled. 
and a great quantity of is corrupted by a very little wormwood meaning you know me I, like i said i try to be long-suffering i try to be patient and you know i think i do a pretty good job you know normally i do a pretty good job i think on a, on a week or so I, I think i do an excellent job but what happens you know at you know that one day when i blow up well you know it, a, a lot of that good that I've done, you know, I'm, you know, washing away with just a little bit of anger because it takes just a little bit, you know, of the sourness to make the, you know, a lot of sweetness go away. And that's what that's what I'm doing. And it's no longer acceptable to his Lord because the whole honey is made bitter. So now this is why I have to be careful because, you know, I do a lot of good deeds. I do a lot of stuff for people intentionally. But, you know. I'm not so careful with my anger and it could be, you know, making my whole my whole offering to the Lord unacceptable. And, you know, that is unacceptable. So I so that's why it's important to, you know, get a hold on this stuff. And, you know, and it loses its use because, you know, I don't want to lose my use before the Lord. That That's scary for a person like me. Verse six. But if no worm would, if no bitterness is put into the honey, it is sweet and profitable to its Lord. Meaning if you if you aren't, if I, you know, aren't fussing and cussing and, you know, you know, being destructive or whatever, then then you can be useful for for he says thus is forbearance sweeter than honey. Now, forbearance, let's look at what that is. It says patience, right? That's what we're talking. That's where we started off at patience. But it's also a synonym of self-control, restraint, tolerance, moderation, leniency, mercy, and impatience. So to have patience is sweeter than honey and profitable to the Lord who dwelleth in it. Right? So we have to dwell in patience. Verse 7, but anger is unprofitable. Now, a different translation uses violent temper, um, which... You know, and which kind of gives some little bit of wiggle room because the Bible says to be angry but sin not. You know, but here using the word anger, it's it's kind it's a, it, it needs a little bit more Bible study if 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 you know what I mean. But let's go on. If therefore anger should be mixed with forbearance, the soul is distressed. So if you are trying to be patient but you're angry, the soul is distressed and it's it's not going to work very well. One of them is going to go away. You know, either you're going to get rid of it, you're going to get rid of the anger and continue in patience, or the anger is going to take over and it's going to force the patience to go away. It's, it's, it, and it, it can't be there together. And its prayer is not profitable with uh, with God. So, you know, this this anger is doing us a lot of dang, damage. You know, we found out earlier how sadness affects us. Well, anger is a bad thing too if it has an effect on our prayers. Right. And, and, you know, remember, prayer is the most most powerful weapon that we have been offered on the planet. You know, well, we don't want to defile our, our weapon with anger. So we have to be really careful. Verse eight. And I said unto him, sir, I would know the sinfulness of anger. You know, what is anger? Well, what's wrong with anger that I may keep myself from it? And, you know, as we, we talked about earlier, you know, whether we're talking about anger or, you know, whether it's a translation issue and we're talking about violent temper or such, we should be able, you know, through this description to figure out. Maybe we can pigeonhole one of them. And he said unto me, thou shalt know it. And if thou shalt not keep thyself from it, thou shalt lose thy hope with all thy house. So this is important. So he said, if you're angry, then you're going to lose your hope with all of your house. You know, I, I don't know, you know, because, you know, it's important to be angry sometime. You have to be, you know, you, you have to be angry sometime. Even the Messiah was angry when he went over there and tossed up those those money changers, you know, those those tables there in the church or whatever. It was necessary, you know, and would it have been a good thing for him to come in there and trying to be all polite and nice talking about, I'm sorry, you're going to have to, you know, move as I dump your table over on the ground. No, flip that mess over, slam it, you know what I'm saying? Just demonstrate some anger and let you know that this ain't right. So, you know, but we have to be careful because we don't want to cross a line that can, you know, end up, you know, affecting our prayer, like we say. So, so let's go on. Let's look for some more evidence. Um, thou shalt know it, and if thou shalt not keep thyself from it, thou shalt lose thy hope with all thy house. And this is important here, because as the head of the household, which Hermans is, you know, in any patriarch society, you have a man of the household who who is, you know, pursuing the ways of the Lord. Well, if he can't get over this one thing, he's going to take all of his house down with him. If the man of the house, if the head of the house cannot control his anger or his violent temper, whatever, he just he'll he'll he he his whole house loses the hope. Right. And that's why that's why it's important. 
well, one of the reasons why it's important is that we we, may, we figure it out and you know learn what we're supposed to be doing. But let's go on. Wherefore, depart from it. Verse 9 says, For I, the messenger of righteousness, and this is one of the uh, venerable angels talking here, and remember this is one of the unique things about Hermas, is that we actually hear, you know, the thoughts of the angels. You know, we, we hear what they say. We heard a little bit about that in, you know, the book like Daniel, where Gabriel came and talked to Daniel, whatever. But this a book is, is you know, a, a lot to do with, you know, angels. And this, this particular one, I can't remember if it's who the angel of righteousness is, but we'll go on. We covered it in one of the other, um, I think it was in um, the vision, I mean, commands one is when we turn, when we talked about the messenger of righteousness and who he actually is. Is it Uriel? Is it Raphael? I can't remember for sure right now. And as many as shall repent with all their hearts shall live unto God. Now, notice that phrase there, live unto God. We'll get back to that later. And I will be with them and will keep them. Now, this is talking about the messenger of righteousness. If we can get over our anger, if we can get over our violent temper, as the other translation uses, he says, um, we shall live unto God and he will be with us. The angel of repentance will be, will be with us. And you could imagine, you know, we're asked to be sheep in this in this world full of wolves. You know, we're, we're not asked to be cunning and wise, you know, but there's a lot of people, you know, that, you know, intentionally or unintentionally harming us and they're doing stuff to us, you know, and, and, it, and it could quick tick us off real quick when we find out, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing. Well, you can imagine that this messenger of righteousness is actually, you know, squelching some of that or going before us and preventing some of that and kind of helping us with our anger issue. Kind of like I put forth the effort to to try to get over my my anger issues and then I get a little help from the messenger of righteousness who stays with me to help keep them. Verse 10, for all such as have repented have been justified by the most holy messenger. Now, this is important, you know, when we, when you think of how hard this mission is and all we have to go through, you know, when we look at, you know, what it what it what it's taken to cross over this this valley of hardship, you know, this veil of tears, you know, everything we look back upon and say, that wasn't a good thing that you did that. And that wasn't a good thing that you did that, especially when you have, you know, a bunch of wicked people who want to say hey you just as wicked as we are look at the things that you've done well there's this word justification here they have been justified by the most holy messenger which is not you know he's not the most holy messenger i think that would be the messiah or the creator you know um it says who is the minister of salvation yes yeah, so he kind of pigeonholed himself minister of salvation we know that that is the the messiah there so you say, you say, well, we 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 gone through our anger. You, we've gotten over it. We we've repented, and now we are justified by the Messiah. You know, he knows how tough it is to be here. You know, but let's go on. But the important thing is to repent and to come back, so we can try to get some of that justification. Other, otherwise, you know, it's, it's going to continue to get worse. Um, verse eleven. And now says he, hear the wickedness of anger. How evil and hurtful it is and how it overthrows the servants of God. Now, this, you know, anger doesn't always overthrow the servants of God. It didn't overthrow the Messiah. I mean, I might have to go back and look and see what ex what exactly the Messiah went through after he tossed over those money changers or whatever. But, you know, I, I don't think it overthrew him. Whereas violent temper, which the other translation, which is the word the other translation uses, it, it it's a much stronger word and you can see how it can overthrow you it's very easy to see how that one can overthrow you but i may be adding more confusion than clarification so let's go on. for it cannot hurt those that are full of faith because the power of god is with them all right so i'm talking about angel or violent temperature if you're full of faith you know it doesn't harm you 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 may be angry but it, what does it say be angry but sin not Meaning you you're not gonna go so far with it. It's, it's, you're only going if you if you do find yourself in an angry position, you know it's gonna be you know take care of the the necessary anger and then let's come back. Whereas the other guy, you know, he enjoys that anger and he's gonna push it to the limits. Don't want to be doing that. But it overthrows the doubtful. All right. Now this is this is this is I think is very important here because this is what I think tr makes helps you make the transition from being angry to a violent temper is when you start being doubtful 
Now, if you've paid attention to my classes, I'm not the holier than thou teacher coming in telling you that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm the most righteous person. You're supposed to be looking. No, I'm a student just like you. I'm trying to learn just like you, you know. And so I'm looking at this and I'm looking looking at it in reflection to my own life and, and episodes when I had violent temper or was, you know, overly angry or went past the point of being angry and actually got into sinning. You know, was there some doubt there? Yeah, it was. There was, you know, I, I, you know, I could look I could look at very specific cases and I was looking at the people around me and the environment in which I live. And I may have been having doubts on whether we were going to actually make it or not, whether we was going to do the things necessary in order to receive the blessings that we work so hard for. You know, and I start to get doubtful and then I'm going to get ticked. Uh, then I'm going to get ticked because I, I ain't going to lie. I've been working a long time and working really hard for this. For some other people to come in, you know, and, you know, start to waver. Like, you ain't been here for five minutes and you ready to go already. I mean, so, you know, you, you start to get a little more angry than you should be when that doubt creeps in. And like I said, I'm looking at my own life and I do see evidence of doubt, you know, that, that you know, made the anger turn into a, vi turn into a temper. You're turn blowing up, you know what I'm saying? You playing with me me and my word, you don't do that. There's areas you don't cross either. Well, I promise you, you will see a lot of anger, you know, and even a violent temper, you know, and, I, and you know, but I have to work on that. So I'm working on that and I'm doing it just now. And those that are destitute of faith. So a person who has an angry, has an angry spirit in them. Not all people have an angry spirit in them, you know, um, you know, but there's the ones of us do well. If we have the angry spirit and we are destitute of faith, well, we're in trouble. You know, we 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 need to fix some of that. For as often as it sees talking about the angry spirit, for as often as it sees such a man or sees such men, it casts itself into their heart. So when anger sees a doubtful and a destitute person, so let's let's look at the chronology. So here I am going through, I'm feeling a little, you know, a little down or whatever because of, you know, how things are going at that particular moment. And I start to feel a little doubtful and I start to feel a little destitute of faith or my faith starts to waver a little bit. So the angry spirit sees me like that. The angry spirit, according to verse 12, when the angry spirit sees me doubtful and destitute of faith, it casts itself into my heart. It casts itself into our heart at that precise moment. And so a man or woman is bitter, ha, is in bitterness for nothing. So you start off looking at the chronology. We start off in doubtful and then we end up in angry and then we ended up, end up in bitterness. Right. That's what it said. The anger is cast into the heart and then comes this bitterness, bitterness over nothing. Right. Bitterness for the things of life or for sustenance. You took my candy. You got one more M&M than I got. Or, you know, just not it's saying that it's nothing. You get bitter over nothing. And when you start to look at these, you know, when you start to sit back and you you look at, you know, you, you have to become observant because a lot of this stuff is going to take a lot to figure out. You have to opposite, you have to observe it in yourself and other people. But when you do and you, especially if you have kids and you start looking at them like y'all are really fighting over nothing, you're arguing, you're upset over absolutely nothing. This is nothing. And, and but it, it applies to the adults too. look at your spouse, look at your sister, your brother and find it. Look at what they're angry about. It's, it's usually nothing. For the things of life, for sustenance, or for a vain word. Oh, you said something to me. If any should chance to fall in, or by reason, re, reason of any friend, I mean, fall into anger. I guess I'm not sure about that phrase or this other one. Or by reason of any friend, you know. But these are the reasons why. This, this is this is the the, the the bitterness. First, you get the bitterness, and then you call this, you know. Th then you get these other, you know, reasons why, you know, to to give you something to be bitter over. You know, the bitterness is there. It was the result of the anger creeping into our heart was the result of us being doubtful or lacking in faith. But now once the bitterness is there, it starts. What is it bitter over? It's bitter over stuff like, you know, the chance to fall in or by reason of a friend or for a debt. You owe me some money or any other superfluous thing in like nature. It's nothing. Right. When you say, well, it ain't the thing that's going to get you in trouble or get us in trouble. No, it's the anger and the bitterness that will continue. That's going to do it. Let's watch. For these things are foolish and superfluous, right? Let's look up super, oh, some people call it superfluous, superfluous, extra, surplus, redundant, unnecessary, unessential, excessive, unneeded, or needless. So it's foolish, it's superfluous, or needless, 
and vain to the servants of God. Talking about those things that, you know, are being argued over up there by, you know, the non-servant of God, over here, you know, who wants to enjoy the angry spirit there. But equanimity is strong. Now, let's look what equanimity is. Composure, calmness, level-headedness, uh, or level-headedness, um, equability, self-control, poise, right? So if you cannot be volatile, which is the antonym for equanimity, if you cannot be volatile, you can be strong because equanimity is strong and forcible. So if you can, you know, be level-headed and, and it threw, throughout, you know, all of the stuff that's going on, if you can, you know, you know, be... Um, um, let me look up another word to use here. Be or word, word. If you can be, you know, it ain't gonna let me look up no word. Come on, play with me. If you could, yeah, if you could be, if you could have self control in these troublous times where anger is trying to creep in, bitterness is taking over, you know, but if you can, if you can be, if you can maintain, you, it's forcible. And you can have great power and see this in great enlargement and it's cheerful and rejoicing in peace and glorifying in God at all times with meekness, you know, and, it, and it's hard to do when people are angry. First thing we want to do is be angry. You know, people love fighting fire with fire when they come in and they see you angry and in a bad mood. The first thing they think is they supposed to be angry and they're in a bad mood, too. When you start raising your voice, they supposed to start raising your voice. Well, if we can actually be under control in that moment. We are going to gain a lot of power for ourselves, and we're going to come out, look, you know, look in a in a lot much better light than if we were to just say, you know what, forget it. You want to be mad? I'm gonna be mad too. Well, let's go on. Verse 14. And this long suffering dwells with those who are full of faith. Now, to 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 to, to be full of faith, it comes with long suffering. Why? Because well, one of the reasons you know it's going to work out in the end anyway. You do what you want, say what you want. You know, I win. You know, I am following the scripture, you know, what it says, you know, you, you know, following your, your belly and what it says, you know, I win in the end. Ain't a whole lot to that. You know what I'm saying? So I might as well act like it. Despite the fact, despite the fact that, you know, you are displaying a lot of anger, you're trying to make me upset, trying to get me angry with you. You know what? Do what you want. You know what I'm saying? It's, you're going to get yours and I'm going to get mine. But anger is foolish and light and empty. Okay. Now, bitterness is bred through folly. Now, here's some important stuff right here, because this these kind of stuff is you have to think about it because it's telling you how it comes. You know, I know sometimes, you know, I even sound, you know, shock myself with, you know, so I'm I sound so smart. No, I got to remember, I just got it from the word. Here it says bitterness is bred through folly. So um, this is the chron chronological order. So from fo from folly, you get bitterness. Now, what is folly? Folly, foolishness, madness, idiocy, silliness, craziness, recklessness, irrationality, or stupidity is silliness. I think of it as silliness. That's the word that comes to me. It's silly because you, you, you get silly first and then come bitterness. Now, I have to use myself as an example because that's the only way I understood it. What I observed is that right before there's bitterness and that, that comes, there's usually some some statement that could that didn't have to be said something that was said that didn't have to be said you, you you may be angry you may be upset about something but you know it was that little hurtful word that crept in that came out that you know is you know that throws like the hand grenade in the conversation well if you just hadn't said that part you was doing all right until you said that part well is is that part that that actually you know makes makes the situation bitter it ends up being bitter you know, sometimes it's a silly phrase and sometimes it's an unnecessary phrase or sometimes it's a hurtful phrase, but it's folly. And from the from that folly comes uh, bitterness. Now, so if you can if you can somehow catch yourself or if I, I'm talking about myself, if I can catch myself before I start to, you know, say these hurtful things, then I don't have to. I don't I can I can squelch the bitterness. I've tried it. You know, the bitterness doesn't come. I doesn't give it room. But now once the bitterness is there is anger. You know, bitterness brings anger. By bitterness, anger. Now, this is kind of backwards than what we heard before, ain't it? You know, maybe there's some Bible study that needs to go here, but it sounded like before we said that anger or bitterness comes from anger. Now it's saying that anger comes from bitterness. Well, what comes from anger? From anger comes fury. Okay, so think think about how this thing's escalating. We just said some foul thing out of our mouth. You know what I'm saying? 
know what I'm saying? If if you wasn't such a heathen, you'd know what I was talking about or something like that. Now the person that got pissed. And so they, now they're going to start. They, they ha, they're doubtful and they don't have a lot of hermits anyway. And so now they're going to, you know, bring some something that's going to make me bitter. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to start talking, especially if they, you know, I, uh, never mind, I'm about to get silly anyway. <clears throat> I skipped that part. But, you know, I skip that hurtful thing because it's going to bring some bitterness or whatever. And then from and then anger and then from anger comes fury. So it's escalating. We're bitter and then well, we're silly. Now we're bitter. Then we're angry. And from angry, there's fury. Now we're into you now. Now. Now we're cutting up. Now we're yelling. Now we're fussing, screaming at the top of our lungs. Our voices, you know, start to tear our, you know, our, our, our voice box up because we're yelling so much. And this fury arising from so many evil principles. Now you have fury inside of you. You're shooting off guns. You, you, you. I mean, you, you're, you're in a furious state. But look what it says here. This fury arising from so many evil principles. Now we're not covering the evil principles here. But you remember, Hermes Academy, we teach powers. There are or teach virtues. There are twelve virtues or twelve. Um, 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 powers, 12 virtuous powers, but there are 12 unvirtuous powers. Each of those 12 virtuous powers, you know, patience, power, confidence, faith, long suffering, charity, bitterly, you know, all of those things, there's an equal and opposite one. You know, for, 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 um, what was one of them, um, um, cheerfulness. There's there's hatefulness or, or you know there's sadness there, there's an opposite to each one and so that's what he's saying you know fury arising from so many evil principles you know which principle you have unfaith you may have doubtfulness you may have uncheerfulness you may have lack of patience or lack of self control well you got so many of these things in you that it worketh a great and uncurable sin meaning you're gonna do something you're gonna do something you know and 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 you're gonna do something that can't be undone. You know, it cannot, you know, God, you know, God forbid you go as far as harming yourself or harming somebody else or, you know, you know, or flat out just burning the house down. But this is what it's talking about. If you do not catch this thing in time, you're going to do something that can't be fixed. Right. And that's what he's saying. So you notice the chronology order. There's there's food and there's uh, silliness or foolishness. Well, oh uh, yeah, folly, then bitterness, then anger, then fury, then an uncorruptible sin. So when are you going to stop it? You know, stop it back. Let's I try to stop mine back there at folly because, you know, I don't need no bitterness, all the other mess. So let's get back there. At folly. All right, let's go on. Verse 15. For when all of these things are in the same man in which the Holy Spirit dwells. Right. You have the Holy Spirit. But now but now you're entertaining this these um, this anger and all these other principles. The vessel could not contain them. It's too full. You got too much going on in there. But runs over and because the spirit being tender, being the Holy Spirit being tender, you know, it's all about long suffering and patience. It cannot dwell in a bad environment. It's the first one to split because it's being tender. It cannot tarry with the evil one and it departs and dwells with him that is meek. All right. So we talked about earlier how you find yourself in a bad position. Well, if you could be the one that remains meek. Right. And remember what meek means. That's the ability to allow people to do stuff to us without, you know, feeling the need to retaliate. It says humble, timid, uh, submissive, gentle, docile, modest, compliant, mild. You can imagine the most meek person and the anti meek person I, I think of is the guy so that screaming, you stepped on my shoe, you stepped on my shoe and all of this all, the whole time. While the other guy, you still standing on his foot and he ain't saying nothing. He's just patiently waiting for you to move off of his foot. Why are you screaming at the other guy? You stepped on my well, you know, this meekness. But if you can be the meek one in the room, guess who gets the spirit? Once all of the angry, once all of the angry people then chased all of their spirits away, you know, and you sitting there being the meek one. Now you got the power. Now you got the, the, the force ability. You know, you you are you got the strength. <clears throat> but we have to be remain meek to get it. 16. When therefore it is departed from the man in whom it dwelt, talked about the Holy Spirit used to be in old coach in the fight. Now coach in the fight and got a little ticked off. Now and the Holy Spirit ain't nowhere close. That man becomes the destitute of the Holy Spirit. Oh, now we're in trouble, All right? Because now you ain't got no guidance. Now you ain't got no. Now you ain't got nothing. Now, now. That that Holy Spirit is gone now. Satan about to have his way with you. He about to do everything. He, the reason why he ticked you off in the first place, he he's about to have his way with you. 
and is afterwards filled with wicked spirits. Because that's the first thing you're going to do. He's going to get them wicked spirits in you. Now, are we talking about demons? No, not necessarily. Remember, um, demons, when we think of demons, the ones that are jumping out of, you know, people's bodies and you hear about them, you know, in, the, in a lot of the, the musicians on TV, how they're possessed by demons. This is a different kind of demon. What you're talking about here is them demons that were created there in, Nef in, uh, ex uh, in Genesis chapter 6. These are earth trapped spirits that have to have a body to jump in in order to survive. No, this is what what we're talking about over here. These wicked spirits that we're talking about over here are the unvirtuous powers, the stuff like hatred, the stuff like, you know, those wicked spirits, the, the spirit of, you know, violent temper. Those things are once you've once we've pushed away the good spirit, we the bad spirit comes in. You remember the pair the how the Messiah taught, I think it was a parable how he talked about how once they, they go in and they clean the house up and clean all of the you know the evil spirits out. Well, you know, when when the person finds themselves in a bad way, even more spirits comes in. Well, it's the same way here, you know, the the and I I mixed that up. I'm actually talking about the other kind of spirit now. All right, I'm gonna push through it, y'all. <clears throat> we, um, my wife says all of these mistakes give my show character, so <clears throat> we gonna go. The spirits that we're talking about are the the wicked powers, and you know, once the the righteous spirit is gone, we're we're overcome by the wicked powers, and it's blinded with evil thoughts. Okay, now, and and there you go. These thoughts are sitting there taking you over. You know what I'm saying? You sit there. It, you 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 are having you know thoughts. You should do this and you should do that. You know what I'm saying? And thus it happens to all angry men. And again, I'm, I'm I think this may be a transition at translation error here, because this always don't happen to all angry people. It didn't. I mean, I trust the word, but like I said, this is a translation error because the other one says violent temper, and this seems like where it will happen where more than just getting angry. I mean. It, Oh, I don't know. I don't want to mess up too bad and say anger is necessary, but you know, no, I don't know. I'm a warrior. <laughs> Let's go on. Wherefore depart from anger and put on equanimity. And we remember equanimity is, is long suffers and, and uh, patience and such. So put to, to get rid of the anger and put on um, equanimity and resist wrath. And this is another another word that we haven't talked about. But it goes along with that with that other word they used up there. What was the other one they used? Um, fury. Yeah. Anger, rage, fury, ire, or madness. Resist wrath, and then shalt there be found with modesty and chastity before God. Okay? So, um, we have to do this first. If, if we can't, you know, then, then, then we're not going to get much modesty or chastity. Take good heed, therefore, that thou neglect not this commandment. You have to keep this commandment. We're in, we're in, in commands here. These are mandates. These are commandments. These are things that we have to do. This one talking about, you know, uh, patience and anger and long suffering is important. Watch this. It says, "For if thou shalt obey this command, meaning if you can do this one, then thou shalt also be, then thou shalt also be able to observe the other commandments which I shall command thee." Which to me means if you can't get over, if you can't get past this one, you, you might as well not read the rest of the book. And maybe why it took me so long to get this one up, because I had some serious anger issues to work with, you know, and I had to, you know, and I got, you know, plenty of room to work with them over the last few weeks or such. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm, so now maybe I can go on to the other commands and be able to do them, you know, now, now that I am. I ain't going to say I've conquered anger, you know, but, you know, I at least knows that he has a place and that place is not in my heart. You know what I mean? So it says, let me read it again. For if thou shalt obey this command and shalt, then thou shalt also be able to observe the other commandments which I shall command thee. Wherefore, strengthen thyself now in these commands that then mayst live unto God. Okay, talking about you living unto God. And whosoever shall observe these commands shall live unto God. Okay. Talking about the ones we had so far. And we are in the book of commands. I know that was a little bit rough, guys. I appreciate you bearing with me there. Um, don't have me to spend a lot of time editing it and, and you know, getting up if you could bear through some of the stuff. Um, you know, on your own. I could actually go on and, you know, get through the rest of them. So 
Please excuse all of the mistakes, all of the rough spots. We're trying to get back in the swing of things. Like I said, we've been having some bouts with all of this anger and stuff being proved firsthand. Let's see. What is the next one talking about? For every man, she have two angels. The angel uh, and all the, under the suggestions of both. So, so I guess I'll spend the next week or so dealing with these two angels. Then I'll have a class to present. In the meantime and in between time, y'all, try not to be angry. Pray for old coach in the fight. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues. 